From Syosset High School in Syosset, New York, Verizon Fios One Sports is proud to present New York High School Girls Soccer. Today it's a mid-season league showdown in Class AA-1 between the visiting Farmingdale Dalers and the host Syosset Braves. Hello again, this is Colin Cosell. I'm joined today by my broadcast partner, Tracy Weiner. Now, Tracy, this is the mid-season. The playoffs are in sight. But this is an interleague matchup, and it's got playoff implications. It's going to have that kind of vibe today, don't you think? Without a doubt. Anytime Farmingdale Syosa gets together, it's a tough game to begin with. But today is really one of those days where we're going to see where the standings start to play out. It is the last game of the first half of the season. From here on in, it is a dogfight. And if you look at everybody's records, nobody is 4-0, nobody's undefeated, nobody has really separated themselves from the pack. Today should go a long way to show where these two teams belong in the conference. Yeah, there's a lot of seating on the line. And, of course, for these two teams to find success, especially taking a look at the visiting Dalers team. That's going to be in the hands of Sidney Moore. What a dynamic player. Sidney Moore is one of those rare kids that as a coach you maybe get once or twice in your career. She is athletic. She is dedicated. Her IQ is completely off the charts. They're going to look to her to own the midfield for them today to get everything going, to try to stop Syosset, who is a dynamic team. But if you don't keep your eyes on Sydney Moore, she could take over this game for the Dalers. And, of course, for the Syosset Braves, they've got Nikki Finelli. They're going to be hoping she can generate some offense for them. Well, she is their leading goal scorer. And in Finelli, what you get is somebody who has no fear going to the goal. This is a kid who loves to put the team on her back. She loves to get to the cage. She will do whatever it takes to get that ball in the net. And, you know, most of these games are low scoring. As you know, all Finelli's going to try to do is get one or two, and that may be all they need. Well, it's going to be a tough one for sure. Two defensive dynamos going head-to-head. -head. So settle in, buckle up. This is going to be a fun one, folks. It's Farmingdale and Syosset next on Verizon Bios One Sports. Well, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Welcome back to Syosset High School, where the Braves and the Dalers are about to kick things off. And of course, the Braves coming into this game with almost identical record to the Dalers. We'll take a look at the starting lineups. For the Dalers, got Joseph Diaz, Las Patelier, and Kiernan on D. The middies, Hank Stahl, Moore, McHugh, and Jaden Keener. And forward, number 19, Emma Best. And in goal, the senior, Gianna Vitelli. It's her third year. She had three saves versus Hicksville on the 24th of September. She'll be trying to keep the ball out of the back of the net for her Daler squad. And, of course, the head coach of the Farmingdale Dalers, Dave Otto. David Otto and his 11th senior. He had 15 years as a JV coach and played soccer at Bethany College. As for the Syosset Braves, on D, we've got Miller, Shin, Cherinkin, and Lee. Midfield, Zoe Winston, Ivani Brandt, and Riley Miller. And the forwards, Nikki Finelli, the speed demon herself. And the twins, freshman twins, Bella and Emma Romano. In goal for the Braves, Eve Waldhauser. It's her first year as a starting goalie. She's made 32 saves this season, so she's made quite an impact in this, her first year as the, seen as a varsity starting goalie. And she is also a freshman. And, of course, the head coach, Joe Marchetta, in his 10th season. He played college ball at LIU Post under coach Paul Riley, who ended up working with, uh, with the LI Fury. And now we'll take a look at our keys to the game with Tracy Weiner. When you look at the keys to the game today, you'll see for Farmingdale, they need to maintain high energy. They're going to need to play for 80 minutes against the Syosa team and possession, possession, and more possession. They cannot give up multiple opportunities. For Syosa, they need to play disciplined defense so that Farmingdale doesn't sneak one or two in and they have to play catch-up for the rest of the game. But for Syosa, they just need to finish their opportunities. They've had many, many chances to score in prior games. They just need to put it in the net. And we are underway here in Syosset. Well, our officials, Jim Wilder and Jim Swanson, will be keeping an eye on things. And we expect a real defensive battle here between these two teams, Tracy. 
Absolutely, and you know what makes this game a little more unique than the rest of them is that it's played on grass. So many of the games now are on turf, and this is actually the, one of the first games we've done this season that's on an all-natural uh, grass surface. Yeah, this is the first one I've done as well, and uh, you know, with the the turf, it's always a well-balanced, even field. So we'll uh, we'll see if there's any tilt here. <laughs> well, and I think the turf alludes to the teams that are, are built on speed. You know, they really can get the ball up and down the field and chase. Where I think on grass, it kind of slows the pace down just a tad. Well, so far, the Dalers have been maintaining possession in the offensive zone. One of the keys they wanted to uh, to execute in this game. Of course, it's a game of possession, but that was the one thing that head coach Dave Otto was preaching. Without a doubt, you know, Otto's been doing this a long time. He started on, on the JV level. Now he's been the varsity coach for some time, and, and he just understands the game and what needs to happen. These, these teams are no strangers to each other. And uh, believe me, they they probably play either with or against each other year-round at some point. And then uh, they get to meet up in the final game of the season. So this this just sets up for the uh, for the duration. There is the uh, the seating, and as Coach Otto was telling us, it, it could be anybody's anybody's championship to win. It's such a well-balanced league. No one has really run away with it, and it's mid-season. This is the time for that to happen as the ball goes out of bounds. I wouldn't be surprised if that last game of the season that they end up playing is for home field in the in the first round of the playoffs. That would be that would be poetic justice. That would be absolutely tremendous. And there is Coach Otto. Calm, cool, and collected. Always. This is his 11th season as a head coach for the Dalers. His 15 years JV coach. Played, uh, played soccer at Bethany College in West Virginia. As the Dalers have been kind of dictating the pace of play so far, that was sophomore Jordan Keener advancing the ball. Overcome by Gianna Morales for farm, or for uh, Sayaset. Sorry, that was Caitlin Shin. Oh, nice collision there in midfield. Things are uh, looking a little chippy. <laughs> As always. Well, Emily Hink is a physical player, and, and she's not afraid to mix it up. I don't think either team has players that are afraid to mix it up, to be, be honest with you. We're going to say Shin's name a lot. You know, she's very, very active on Syosset, and she's being asked to, you know, be that last line of protection pretty much. And you'll see her very, very much involved as Farmingdale hits the offensive end of the field. We've got a uh, good crowd here for it as well as the Dallas try to advance it. A nice header there by Bella Lee, Isabella. <laughs> She's a sophomore. There's a nice mix on the Braves team. They've got a lot of seniors. Graduated a lot of seniors last year. So these ladies are very familiar with each other. They've got great chemistry. And now Julie McHugh throws it in and is kicked out of bounds, out of harm's way by Riley Miller. Farmingdale to throw in. That was Rebecca Joseph trying to get something going here. But of course, both of these teams so strong defensively. This could very easily be a, a one nothing or nothing nothing tie. And of course, here in Long Island, there's no overtime, so that would be uh, not until the playoffs. Jeb would just add to the drama that has been going on in this season with the uh, with all the teams pretty evenly matched. Absolutely, I, I, we did a game the other day, uh, Southside Garden City, that ended up in a 0-0 tie as well. What a great game, though! Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And both of these teams are really trying to string together some wins here. And, uh, the Dalers were able to do that; they had a three-game winning streak earlier, but now they are at three and three. As Bella moves her way up the field. Ball goes out. That's a slide tackle. Out of bounds. It should be our first corner kick of the game. Bella Romano had to track it all the way down. I think she's now in Ronkonkoma. <laughs> <laughs> she might be. And we will get our first offensive chance here. Saw the replay. The ball sails wide. And Bella ran about a half mile. Gathered it up. And here we have our first corner kick. And this would be our, our first real offensive opportunity. And it comes in the hands of the Braves. You know, Farmingdale had that possession all the way down. They were they were really in the first five minutes of this game in the offensive zone, but it did not get a corner kick out of it. Syosset's first time down, corner kick. 
as the players are jockeying for position. Perfectly placed. And the goalkeeper, Gianna Vitelli, the senior, with a nice save, and the Dalers are trying to advance it up the field once again. However, uh, Alexandra Shrinken, number 14, she goes by Sasha, by the way. Well, you'll see here, I mean, look at the aggressive play, and not only do you make the save, but you get it out of harm's way. Yeah. That rebound went so far out of the attacking zone that Sasha did not even get a chance to quickly put it behind her. Oh, that was, uh, that was a uh, quintessential goaltend, goalie move there, great positioning. You expect that from your senior goalie in Vitelli. Uh, absolutely. Riley Miller trying to get things going back up the field for the Braves. But it's just been a ping pong match so far, back and forth. And that was Emma Romano trying to get things going, but once again, the Dalers defense shuts it down. It's senior Sydney Moore for the Dalers. That pass is, is so, it shows you exactly what Sydney Moore's IQ is. Sydney kicks it to his face on that clear column that nobody was even near. Yeah. And it forces the, the, the Dale defender at that point, which was Nicolas Battaglia, to fill in that, that green space. Yeah, and that was uh, that was Cameron Miller who was able to get it out of harm's way. But the Dalers are threatening once again as we've got Sydney Moore controlling, dribbling, trying to find an opening. Wow, trying to get the redirect there was Julia McHugh. And Emma Romano. Along with Zoe Winston there, uh, trying to get, get this ball up the field, but it's just kind of, again, ping-ponging back and forth between the Braves and the Dalers. It's finally, the ball crosses midfield for the Braves. Goes out of bounds at the hands of Nikki Finelli, unable to control it. The Dalers will throw it in. A little too much foot on that, but that was a great, you know, Sideline to sideline pass there. Finelli gets her head on that and is able to corral it. She's she's got nothing but open space in front of her on that. And she is so fast. She gets that opening. Say goodbye. And now the Braves are threatening indeed, trying to get the ball across. But of course, goalkeeper Gianna Vitelli was there to gobble it up, get it out of harm's way. So we've seen the Dalers controlling in the offensive zone. A lot, but uh, most of the offense, offensive opportunities we've seen are coming at the end of the Braves. Exactly. Farmingdale has been, you know, Farmingdale has been down in this area, but they have not really gotten any quality scoring opportunities. Now we just keep seeing the immovable object, Cameron Miller, <laughs> playing some stellar defense for the Braves. And a little pseudo bicycle kick there by Sasha Shrinken. Number 14, the senior. And now the Braves will get the goal kick and try to get some offense going once again. <laughs> Take a look at the NASA Conference AA1 standings. As we talked about, it's uh, the top four teams, even top five, Syosset and Farmingdale jockeying for position. Hicksville and Port Washington, not so much, but you take a look at this go anyway. I mean, those top five teams are all semi-equal, you know, you want to say? I mean, obviously East Meadow 4-1 and Peak 4-1, and but still, this is just one of those conferences that are so competitive, and we've only gone halfway through, and the weather wasn't as nice as it is now to start the season, so I think that you know, everybody's kind of into it now, and, and school has started. You've gotten over that initial, okay, you know, we played it all summer long to prepare. Now they're just into the season. Yeah, all the kinks have been figured out now. The chemistry should be there. Now it's just about execution. Now it's all about coaching and executing what the coach preaches. And here's an opportunity for Syosset, the Braves. But it gets away from Nikki Finelli. Tries to find an opening. It's off the post. And a, another opportunity for the Braves. So they are really trying to capitalize on their chances. Again, not a lot of constant pressure in the offensive zone, but when they're in there, the ball is finding its way towards the net. Finelli's just so dynamic. I mean, she makes things happen out of nothing, you know, with her speed and, and her tenacity. And th that ball was literally inches from being a one-nothing game. 
Any goalie will tell you in any sport, the post yeah. is just another piece of equipment. Absolutely. <laughs> As the ball carries out of bounds, that went off of Rebecca Joseph, and now it is thrown in by Isabella Lee. Trying to find an open player. Nikki Finelli is overtaken there by Rebecca Joseph. And another one of these battles where everyone is just coming down on the ball. Oops, get a little chippy there. We got a little <laughs> footlocker there. Well, I think what happened was her cleat got stuck in the shoelace and she couldn't get it out. You can't script that. That's <laughs> no, you can. And, and both girls handled it well, though. And you see right now the Sayasa player, I can't see her numbers, tying her shoelace because I think it uh, came undone on, on Hink's cleat. Well, let's take another look at that opportunity that they missed. And you see Fennell right there. Look at her go. Fennell is just so, I mean, quick and, and, and makes things happy. You have to watch her. And that just hits the pipe. Again, six inches to the left, and it's a one nothing game. And here we are back live again. 28 and change remaining here in the first half. Of course, it is two 40-minute halves. No overtime in the regular season here on Long Island. It's a beautiful day here in Syosset High School. Thank goodness it was looking a little shoddy there at first. It was for a hot minute. A little cloud cover, but this yep. is perfect soccer weather. It is. You know what I like about what Syosset does with Finelli is that they... Uh, so they put her to the outside. You know, a lot of teams will take their best player and put her in the middle of the field. And that's where, you know, you draw all that defense and whatnot. They leave Finelli to that outside uh, alley, and, and she just dominates. I mean, she just blows by everybody out there and creates so many scoring opportunities for her teammates. And with her ability to pass the way she does, that's just a matter of her getting open and finding the open player. So that'll be uh, interesting to see as it's headed away there. The crowd reacted and said, ooh, sounded like it hurt, but uh, <laughs> Riley Miller was unfazed by it. And now we get in on the action. And Rebecca Joseph throws it in. Emily Hink, whose cleats are now firmly planted in the grass and not in shoelaces. She advances it over to Allison Kiernan. Smart defensive play by Zoe Winston to get out of harm's way. Chased down by Bella, and out of bounds it goes, and it'll be a throw in. Corner kick. Nope. Yep, there's the throw in. Nope, the ref did call a corner kick. So the throw in is has been nullified, and it's going to be Farmingdale with an opportunity here. That's going to be senior Sydney Moore. Nope, she has decided to pass it along to Rebecca Joseph. So a little bit of confusion here in the brave zone, and it is a throw-in after all. And here's an opportunity. Ball goes up and over. That's the first offensive chance, and that came off of the boot of Amanda Stahl. And, and Stoll was one that they were looking for the whole time. Everybody was close to the ball. It was a throw-in, but when you watch the play, so it's a pass back, and it's a pass in, up in the air for Stoll to try to either kick it or head it in. And she didn't have much to work with there, but it was a lot closer, and that just was a testament to her skill level. Now it is a goal kick. Amanda's so athletic. Uh, you know, she, you'll see her speed at some point, and again, you want to talk about a cuter place with no fear. That's Amanda Stoll. I like the move there by Julie McHugh, letting it go out of bounds so she could reset the offense, but no. That has been overtaken by Riley Miller once again. And she passed back to Ivani Bryant. Brandt. Goes all the way across the field. And now, possible offensive opportunity? No. It has been gobbled up. Whistle blows the play dead. Allison Kiernan is trying to maintain possession there. Kiernan does a nice job of, of protecting the ball and, and just getting her body in a position where the only thing that the Sasa player could do was foul her at that time. And that is what you call a smart foul. So, so far, it has been deadlocked. 25 minutes remaining here, 15 minutes in. Farmingdale and Syosik, Colin Cosell with Tracy Wiener. And our entire Fires One Sports crew, we thank you for joining us. As we've seen a lot of back and forth, not too many opportunities. The closest one coming for the Braves, it was off the post. But uh, this, this is literally living up to exactly what we expected. No doubt about it. You know, and they take the time to feel each other out, see what's going on, see what matchups they like, and then try to expose those. 
So, so far it's been kind of a chess match as it's gobbled up there by Eve Waldhauser. And that's an excellent kick. You always want your goalie to get it to at least midfield. So that was a quintessential goal kick there. But it is gobbled up once again by the Dalers. So it's amazing. In the midfield, the Dalers seem to be able to control the ball. But that that Braves defense is just too stingy. It is tough. And because, you know, you don't want to give up any fast breaks or anything to that nature. You know, you're only putting one or two down low. So you can get it in the midfield and get that possession. But then when you get into the defensive end, it's, it's three times the amount of white shirt, uh, red shirts to white shirts. And we keep seeing Rebecca Joseph and Julia McHugh controlling along the sidelines. A lot of throw-ins for the Dalers. In the early start to this game here. That was a nice little uh, nifty move. It didn't work for Sydney Moore trying to generate some offense. Oof. Now that was allowed <laughs> smack off at the head, but no harm, no foul there. As Jaden Keener trying to find an opening, and it has just been almost frustrating for these Dalers, unable to find an opening. And there's an opportunity. Oh, and it sails just out of harm's way. That looks like it hit the outside of the post on the save on that one. I agree. I think Eve Waldhauser just got a tiny piece of it, just enough. We'll take a look at the replay. And you'll see Waldhauser just lays out for this one, and I think she hits it off to the side and then creates a corner kick for the Dalers. I don't know if that was on goal or she wasn't taking any chances, though. That's no. for sure. Yeah, better be safe than sorry, especially since, you know, you've got such uh, stingy defenses on both sides of the field. You just want to make sure you don't make any mistakes, so... And there was an opportunity off the corner kick, and it goes sailing just over the net. So Farmingdale finally getting some opportunities here. And that was at senior Emily Hink once again. Yeah, you'll see here the pass comes in, and, and Hink's all over it, but she just directs it just past the cage. And so it remains notched at nil, as they would say across the pond. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be Cameron Miller with the goal kick. Trying to advance it up the field to Isabella Lee. And if Farmingdale, 4 1 with shots to say, us, it's. But like we spoke with Dave Otto prior to the game starting, and the, the, the Dalers in the Baldwin game had a tremendous shot uh, lead, but they could not score and ended up losing that game. They had the advantage in shots in the Baldwin game, but just couldn't. couldn't generate any goals well it seems to be uh, uh two two teams here that you know again are just so strong in, in defense but uh, the offense has just not been able to come together taking a look at the farmingdale dalers season so far a regular three and three they've scored eight goals over that six game span they've only allowed four which preaches to their defense and their most recent victory was against hicksville three nothing on the 24th but they are coming off of a one nil loss to baldwin just the other day Plus i'm saying you give up four goals the entire season but you have three losses yeah so that just tells you that you know your defense is doing a great job and the offense needs to find that that scoring touch but i think they concentrate so hard on the defensive end that sometimes you do give up some of that offense yes and that has been the case so far now the braves in home red trying to get it up past midfield which has been uh, a tall task for them so far as we take a look at assistant coach Ian Incremona for the Syosset Braves of course head coach is Joe Marchetta who is in his 10th season as a head coach and again this midfield battle keeps leaning the uh, the way of the Dalers but now the Braves are able to get it back in their position Cameron Miller trying to advance it up the field Tries to find Carly Weisfelner, gets it, hold of it, and just like that, Julie McHugh. Now the ping pong match is back in it again. We got some aggressive play coming out of Avani Brandt, the sophomore. And of course.
course, Avani Brandt is committed to Stanford University, the Ivy League of the West Coast. And she's just a sophomore midfielder. She's already committed, so the future looking very bright for Syosset. <laughs> Without a doubt, and Stanford's just a beautiful, beautiful campus. Oh, yeah. Absolutely stunning. So, the Dalers once again with an opportunity coming off the foul. Trying to generate that offense. It's been very, very elusive. Sydney Moore. Gets a hold of it, and it is stolen by Bella Romano. Well, every time that Moore touches the ball, she's going to draw a double team. And, you know, you had Romano and, and Brandt just closed any, any open space that she had. And we've got a nice, aggressive battle along the sideline here. And once again, midfield is not friendly to the Braves. And the dealers are able to reacquire it. Allison Kiernan gets it up the field. She is being hounded by Ali Milas, the sophomore. And that was Bella Romano advancing up the field. Gotta love the Syosset fans are sitting behind us. They are, <laughs> they are vocal. They're having a blast. They said, should we sit in the other bleachers? They said, absolutely not. <laughs> Without a doubt, we don't want to. No, we want to be part of the excitement. I do. I like hearing all that. Yeah. As long as we keep it family friendly. And now uh, we've got <laughs> we've got Jaden Keener trying to advance it. And once again, Bella Romano, who has just been a uh, stalwart back there. And she, Bella Romano, is just a uh, freshman. Her twin sister, Emma, is also on the team. She wears number 36. Now, keeping in mind the, again, the amount of seniors they have on this Braves team, but, you know, you've got your sophomore standout who's already committed. You've got twins who are freshmen. Obviously, the chemistry's already there, so, again, no matter what happens this, se this season, so that's it. Has a very bright future. Here's an opportunity, and it gets just away from Bella Romano. And nice, aggressive play by Emma Romano. I do think Finelli's down over there. She's going to have to shake it off. She really hit the turf a little hard. Looking for an opportunity. No opening presented itself and passing it back. That was Ivani Brandt trying to regenerate some office, offense. And Bell Romano pass across, and it lightly comes to goaltender the senior, Gianna Vitelli. She just casually rolls it up the field. This is a good game. Look, so nice and aggressive, you know, and it's, it's not that they're doing anything that they shouldn't be doing, but both teams just have a way about them that is just uh, fun to watch because they, they are, are aggressive enough with each other to make it exciting without being uh, Ill illegal. Not a lot of penalties called today. No, so we just had an offside that generated this offensive chance here for the Dalers. But uh, now getting a taste of their own medicine, they're just not able to advance it past the midfield. Syosset's so really tightening up their game. And there is an interception by Bella Romano, but it is gobbled right back up again by the Dalers. That was passed along by Julie McHugh. Pass it up to Jaden Keener. Handball. And there is a handball called. Try to right pass here. it back, and there it is. Yep. I'm inadvertent, but it's still a handball nonetheless. Jaden Keenan was, you know, trying to corral that ball and hit off her foot and went popped up into her hand. Well, that was Caitlin Shin, who was on the defense there. And now Nikki Finelli showing off that speed. She is small, but she is a lightning fast. She handles the ball so much for them, too. And offsides and again. That, yep, another offside, so... Sausage really chomping at the bit here to get some offense going, and it's uh, costing them some offsides. But it also shows the players' intensity, and there you see Coach Marquetta. He said his, uh, his team just needs to remain disciplined. And in order to have that, uh, that discipline, that's four offsides for the Braves so far, so they need to be a little more disciplined in the offensive zone for sure. Well, I think also what happens, though, is that there's such a sudden turnover in the midfield because both teams are playing so aggressive that if you're a, an attacker, you're already deep thinking the ball's coming, you turn it over, but you don't even have enough time to get back before they send it forward. Oh, it was a nifty move there by... It looked like that was... Uh, 
Well, it was Alpha Sayasid player. Yes. Who, uh, but uh, I'm trying I, I, to figure out who. There was a little was confusion Emma there. Emma kicked it. Yes, it was Emma who got it out there, but it was uh, who was in control of the ball there. It's, it, there's a lot of a lot of congestion on the field. Everyone seems to be clearing over the ball. Well, they're all playing in, in between the 30s. Five, seven. Five, get up, get up. That was thrown in by Rebecca hey. Joseph. I don't think this is a 100-yard field either. I would agree with that. I forgot my tape measure at home, but I'm going to I can tell by the center circle yes. and where the other lines are, it, it's not a lot of space. Yeah. Which leads me to believe that this is not a 100-yard uh, field. So the field's a little shorter. That works in advantage of all uh, every team that plays here, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends. You know, if you're a team that, that likes to spread out and, and uh, you know, use all your green space, and this kind of hinders that. But it also limits the exhaustion. Once again, <laughs> another... Opportunity squandered there by the Dalers, and it is going to be a goal kick for the Braves. So lining it up is Eve Waldhauser, and we'll take a look at Coach Marquetta's team. The Braves so far, two, three, and one. They've scored seven goals and have allowed seven goals in that span. That's 1.2 per game, and they most recently defeated Baldwin, the same Baldwin team that beat the Dalers. They won two to one. So they're trying to string together some wins here. One game below 500. The Dalers are at 500. And uh, all the teams in AA1 do make the playoffs. But it's I all was, about seeding. I do, but I always wonder as a coach, when you know that you're playing in this kind of conference, it's home and away, and then the playoffs. Do you show, how much do you really show during the season? It's a great question. Nifty play attempt there by the Braves. Whoa, and it tripped over the ball. It's Emily Hink. And it is cascaded out of harm's way off the foot of Julia McHugh. That was unfortunate for Hink in them, you know, getting ready to start a fast break and just stepped on the ball and lost her footing. Yeah, that was uh, unlucky for Emily. She's had a cleat issue and now a ball <laughs> issue, so. All right, three times a charm. Sure. <laughs> And today it's Emily Hink versus Gravity. <laughs> and actually, I think that works very well for the uh, the Braves, though, because when she is on the ball, she's she's got a very good acumen. She's very on top of where her players are. She's got great uh, super awareness. Super aggressive, too. She's so athletic. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's those kids that are so quick that their brains are thinking faster than their bodies can move. And that was a beautiful set play, an opportunity squandered once again for the Braves, but it looks like their passing is starting to come together. The ball goes off of Bella Romano. But Emily Diaz does a nice job of clearing that out, giving her defense a chance now to, to fill in. Yeah, yeah! And from twin to twin, that was Emma Romano with the throw in, and... The ball sails very much wide, but at least an opportunity there for Ivani Brandt, a sophomore. And you, uh, what's the old saying that Wayne Gritsky said? Uh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take? That's correct. So, so he is the great one. Well, hockey season's just around the corner, Tracy. Can't wait. Can't <laughs> no. wait. But in the meantime, I'm <laughs> going to enjoy this beautiful weather and Gorgeous. soccer. But this game is, you know, again, this conference is so competitive that on any given day, I think when we get into the playoffs, you're going to see it's the team that's on a roll. It's a team that's healthy. Yes, absolutely. You Health know. is key. And then sometimes the weather plays a factor into it, but not lately. When the playoffs start in mid-October, you know, I, I find that the, the fall weather is almost better sometimes than the spring weather. And the Braves, speaking of injuries, are without Kendall Halpern and Kelly Batkowitz, both of whom are nursing ankle injuries. So the Braves now starting to generate some offense, spending a little more time in the Dalers' defensive zone. 10.30 remaining here in the first half, notched at Hill. We saw the Braves there on the bench, assessing the situation, cheering their teammates on, and the corner kick on the way. And an opportunity, it is gobbled up by Gianna Vitelli. Boy, Weissfinder had such a great chance to get that, and literally, literally Vitelli just took it right away from her. You'll see she's the closest one to the cage when this kick takes off. Weissfinder is right there, getting ready, and oh, 
So close. I've been really impressed with, with Carly's play so far. She said, she, first of all, she controls the ball very well. Her passing has been very crisp, and I'm sure that translates to her offensive ability. And speaking of offense, there's an opportunity there for Gianna Morales of the Dalers, but it is once again saved by E. Waldhausen. Let's see. So Sydney Moore. Sydney There's Moore just, you know, she plays mostly in the, in the middle of the field, not so deep offensive minded, but she's always around the cage. That was her head that almost put that ball in the cage. You'll see right here. Sydney goes up for it, hits right off the top of her head, but just wide of the cage. Yep, and uh, I guess that was a stinger there. She was holding her head after <laughs> went off there, and uh, you know what? It, it never feels good. Ah, she's fine. Oh, yeah. She's tough. She is so tough. So athletic. Boston College is getting a good one in her. Yeah, that's right. She is committed to Boston College. She is the speaking captain, but she needs to be careful for ships since uh, Mr. Official. He's going to probably look at her and say, all right, young lady, I heard you. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> And now the Braves, once again Cameron Miller, who's been the goal kick specialist for the Braves here in the first half. Also another thing to keep an eye on with Sayasi, all of their, I'd say 90% of their scoring, I think they've scored one goal in the first half, and all their other goals this season, season have been scored in the second half. It's an interesting statistic, you know, because at some point that's gonna, that's gonna be a problem if you always play from behind. Yeah. So, you know, unless it's just, where their defense, you know, they concentrate so far on the defense, they don't take too many offensive risks or opportunities until the second half. Could be the mindset of the of the coach and the team. Well, it's uh, with eight minutes remaining here in the half. There have been opportunities. As Coach Otto told us, it could very easily go 1-0 or, or nothing, nothing. Uh, but uh, it, it could very easily be 1-1 one, one or 2-2 or two, two at this point. <laughs> Seen some really, really close shots, a couple posts. But a lot of midfield battles going back and forth here between these two teams. And it, I mean, it, it does have kind of that playoff vibe. No one wants to make that first mistake. As they size each other up here in the first half. And perhaps that's part of the Braves' play mentality here, at least this season. And now the Braves trying to advance it up. Carly was, Carly, that was Carly Weisfelner, who is trying to advance up the field, but the Dalers, once again, intercept, moving it up the line, and it is kicked out of harm's way by Caitlin Chin. Not a lot of subbing going on yet either. I don't think that we've had either team with substitutions. And maybe that's another coaching move. Coach Marquetta there, trying to get out of the way of the free throw. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> that's true too. A little trickery. Good for him. <laughs> oh, ooh, and a nice move there. The crowd reacts. Ali Milas with a nice move and fortunately unable to move it up thereafter. Well, the, the official back here is saying that Finelli is offsides on that. I'm not really sure if the ball got there long before she did, but he called it for offsides. Did you see her reaction was, yeah. you know. Not happy. No. <laughs> oh, and that's the uh, that's the third time she's been called on offsides here, and I believe that's the fifth time for the Braves in this first half. So they're they're excited to try to get that breakaway because they know how good this Farmingdale's def uh, defense is. Well, and they also want to expose Finelli's speed because once she's in the open field like that, no one's going to catch her. Well, I've seen some nifty ball work out of Carly Weisfelner. We just saw it out of Ali Milas, and of course the speed of Nikki Finelli. A little inadvertent contact, it seemed like there. That was Sasha Cherinkin, who now will be throwing the ball in. Of course, birth name Alexandra, but everyone calls her Sasha. Sasha, so I'm abiding by that. You know, my curiosity peaks when you say that. <laughs> I know. I, I didn't get the backstory on that. Cameron Miller advancing it up to Carly Weisfelner. Oh, a little collision there. Things are getting a little chippy. Whoa, and we've got bodies flying everywhere. And I feel like I've been saying Carly Weisfelner's <laughs> name quite a bit today. You have, but Sydney Moore did a great job of avoiding that contact. <laughs> That was fun to watch. Yeah. She, she saw it coming, and, and uh, 
made sure that yeah <laughs> not today nope not today <laughs> allison kiernan now with the free kick at midfield and it goes across there's a little bit of a miss hit there that was ali milas and now carly weisfelner unable to acquire it and it's stopped on the sideline and very very quickly to advance it was emma romano and the penalty is called there. It was a push. It was a, uh, a push, and now we've got Bella Romano sizing it up, trying to find the open player. And it just went wide of Ali Milas. And now the Dalers trying to move it up the field, and they do so. That is at the hands of Graziella DiDio. And it goes out of bounds. So another free throw. And the Braves now trying to generate some offense in the waning moments here of the first half. Again, tied at one. And this is what we've seen a lot today. You know, just in the midfield, everyone is just hounding the ball and, and hounding each other it's, yeah the game is being played primarily in between the 30s as we like to say yep um you know each team's had like one or two decent scoring opportunities but nothing that i would say would have been considered a slam dunk or a misplay now if it's less than a 100 yard field can we call it between the 30s still <laughs> right you're not kidding I, <laughs> not this question i would say it's about a 90 yard field if i had to guess all right so we'll say it's between the 40s between the 40s <laughs> Excellent. All right, well, here we have the three-minute mark in the first half. And it is going to be another corner kick for the Dalers. This one's going to come off the foot of Sydney Moore. Look for Amanda Stoll, number 14. She's standing there ready. Let's see if that's who the play is designed for up in the air. And it's... I think there's a bit of a miss hit there by Sydney, and it goes out of bounds off the referee who's getting involved in the action. <laughs> so we've had coaches, we've got refs, everyone's getting involved. And once again, Cameron Miller in her office, which we call the goal kick area. <laughs> oh, here's an opportunity. No, the defense once again tightens up. Well, and if you look around on that particular play, it's literally five red shirts yeah. to one white one. That is a wall. Nice move there. Crowd reacts accordingly. Emma Romano playing like a senior, but she is a freshman. Getting the ball up the field. Nikki comes all the way across. Here's an opportunity. It goes safely across. Bella Romano trying to get on top of it. She does, but she is being hounded by Nicolette Spatelier. L'Hospitalier. L'Hospitalier. It's a Nico. Nico L'Hospitalier. Well, yeah, we'll it took me Nico. years to practice that name, and I had her older sister, too, so I have a little more practice at that name than you do. <laughs> She's a lacrosse player? Uh, Nicolette is, yes. Yes. And it's funny, because I've actually done a Farmingdale girls lacrosse team, and I should have her pronunciation down. I still don't. <laughs> That's okay. It took me years. And you take a look at that replay, trying to get the ball across. And you see Nico just, you know, again, Finelli does what she needs to do. She comes from the offside, out hustles everybody to the opposite corner, gets a beautiful kickoff, but there was nobody filling in that space. And then Nico does a nice job of, of like you said, hounding the, the player and then getting the ball out of bounds. Well, less than a minute to go, so it looks like both teams are really going to try to get this offense going, but no. We have a penalty call there. Whoa, things are definitely getting chippy there. Emily Hank. Yeah. A, little, uh, a little push there, getting chippy, 40 seconds Maybe. remaining. I think she was happy with that call. No, she was not. <laughs> Again, you know, this is what you expect from the Dalers, and, you know, they have that, that mentality that they're never going to quit and nothing's a foul. And, uh, and then, right, body first, you know. Well, we had Julia McHugh trying to get it up to Graciela DiDio. And it was a, a brilliant pass, and then another collision. You could hear the crowd react. Yeah, they're not afraid to collide. That I can tell you. They are not afraid of, of 
any context, either team, and nobody on the soccer field is. You know, for the people to say that soccer is a non-contact sport, I, I don't see it. <laughs> now these two teams have defied those odds, and here we are at the end of the first half. It remains nothing, nothing. The Syosset Braves, the Farmingdale Dalers, Colin Cosell, Tracy Wiener come back. We're going to have the halftime highlights, take a look at the stats, and then we will get ready for what is sure to be a riveting second half. So don't go anywhere. More coverage coming up on Verizon Files 1 Sports. Welcome back to Syosset High School, where the Farmingdale Dalers and Syosset Braves are notched at 0-0. We saw some uh, excitement in the first half there, Tracy, but no goals. No, but we did have a few good scoring opportunities. On the first one that you'll see here, Finelli with the speed run. I mean, she just blows by all the Dalers, makes a beautiful pass to Winston. Winston gets a powerful shot off, but just hits the pipe on that and just misses. That ball goes three inches to the left, and it's a one-nothing game. Farmingdale tries to answer back, and you'll see here, what a nice save by the freshman off a shot. And, and Sydney Moore takes the corner right here. Emily Hink gets her head on it, but again, off the cage. So that's another opportunity that the Dalers had, and I think this is the best one that they had of the day. Kiernan puts it over the top. Sydney Moore uses her head. But again, freshman goalie. Can't, can't count her out. We love Wallhauser. Gets it done. Looks like a senior back there, keeping everything under control for the Braves. Yeah, we've seen a lot of stellar performances out of freshmen so far on the Braves side. Now take a look at these first half stats. Take a look at the one thing that really stands out there is, is the offsides. It was, but, you know, that's Finelli's speed. That's a big piece of it. You know, she was beating the Dale defenders. They were pulling up high to try to stop that, that speed from beating them. The balls were going over the top. I thought one or two of them actually could have went either way, but I would say there was a good four of them that were legitimate offsides. Well, it's been a very evenly matched game so far. You see it in the stats there with the exception of offsides. Notched at 0-0 Farmingdale. Syosset, second half action coming up next. Don't go anywhere. Advice for my beautiful daughter. Start the day early. Be confident with who you are. Fill every moment and make time for what matters. Like this, you just fall in love. Welcome back. We are underway here in the second half, and it is the Braves' ball to begin. Trying to get some offensive opportunities. Once again, Colin Cosell and Tracy Weiner with you. Beautiful day here in Syosset. A little cloud cover, but that, we don't mind that at all. And this game is it ended. The first half ended a little chippy, and it is picked right back up here in the second half. <laughs> as we saw Avani Brandt, who is pretty fearless, going after the ball. And let's take another look at our keys. What have we seen? Has, has this been properly executed, Tracy? Well, I will tell you that both teams have maintained high energy. Farming in particular, they have possessed the ball, but not in quality scoring opportunities. Syosset has played an extremely disciplined defense, and they have had several opportunities that they have not been able to finish on. So that's why we're at 0-0. And that's been the key to their season, really. For Coach Marchetti, he said, we've had so many opportunities, and we've watched them here. And there's a, almost an opportunity there for the Dalers. Is screaming in was Nico. And then it is all of Ani Branch with a nice move. She makes her way up the sideline. Another great move from Avani Branch. Finally advances it up the field, finding who else? Nikki Finelli. But I will say, for all the nice moves that Brant made, the defense of Farmingdale still did a nice job of keeping her in the alley. They never let her get to the middle of the field. So you see here, she's so far away from the goal. That's She's not in any critical scoring op opportunity at this point. And all she was able to do at this, because she was so tired from all of her moves, was kick it out of bounds there. So yes, she made some great plays, and you can see some flashes of soccer brilliance in this kid. Yeah. We have to give Farmingdale's defense credit on that as well for not biting even when they were beaten. 
And you got to give credit to Stanford University acknowledging talent at such a young age. You can see the intensity before the game, all smiles. She was having a blast. But as soon as that whistle blew, you see the intensity on Bonnie Brandt's face. Meanwhile, it is the Dalers, and the ball comes right to us. Tracy Wiener with the save. That's about my soccer extent right there. <laughs> yeah, and it was a handball. So <laughs> it was. <laughs> that was illegal, and wow. More contact there on the field. That was from uh, your old friend, Nico. <laughs> Las Patalier. Did I get it right? Las Patalier. Yes. Yes. Got it. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, Nico's as tough as they come, trust me. You can see that. <laughs> Absolutely see that, so. The Dalers are threatening a bit, and we're going to set up for another corner kick. And who else but Sydney Moore? And now the she lines it up, trying to find players that are cutting in. And another header. Oh, and it is saved once again by Eve Waldhauser. Now both corner kicks that have had opportunities to go in the back of the net and then headers and it is softly well, you'll saved see here, by Waldhauser. I, I do think the initial pass is supposed to go to Amanda Stoll, but it goes over Amanda's head and ends up with Hink trying just to get her head on it at all. But I don't really think that's the way the play is drawn up. I mean, obviously you go with it, but I do think that, that their corners are designed for Amanda Stoll. And Waldhauser just waited for the ball to come into her hands, got a hold of it, and negated the offensive opportunity. Now the Braves, Bella Romano, the Romano show, Emma and, and Bella. On the right side of the field, we keep seeing Nikki Fernelli. On the left side of the field, it's the Twins dominating. So the outside game has been pretty much paramount to the Braves' offensive success, or at least opportunities. But they're unable to find anything in the midfield area, so that's... That's a tough way to generate offense. Yeah, I, mean, I would think that that's the strategy of both teams. Keep it out of the middle, keep it in the alleys, because truly it's so difficult to score from those areas. I mean, obviously you don't want to give up the middle of your field, and that just makes sense. I mean, I don't know if that's, you know, sounds like we're intelligent soccer people when we say that. I think anybody <laughs> listening is saying, come on now, people. You know, it's, it's obvious, but it, it is. It's hard to bunch up the middle you know your instinct is to guard ball and go after it and i think that they're well disciplined enough to not do that well there is a, an opportunity there trying to take a page out of the braves book advancing the ball up the field trying to get it to emma best right and i i mean for me if i was so I, said, I would look in the second half, especially in the second half of the second half when everybody's tired, is to just sail the ball and let Finelli just outrun everyone. Well, imagine how fast-paced this game would be if the Braves were just composed of Romano twins and Finelli's. And wow, that's a little uh, chippy action once again. And a frustrated <laughs> Allie Milas. Yes, she was definitely frustrated on that. And, you know, that's what makes this game fun. You'll see here... Just a little, con I mean, just a little contact. A little. You know, 10 uh, yards. Watch the Jets game yesterday. Their defense weren't hitting that hard. I don't know what well, you're talking about. That, yeah. was, that was a good, I mean, listen. listen. It, it, across the pond, this is football, yes. not soccer. That's correct. So she's confused. And here they call it hand egg. <laughs> but I like those plays. Look, sometimes you just can't stop yourself either. I mean, you're sprinting 50 yards down the field and you're expected to stop on a dime. That doesn't always happen. No. Cleats can, can only do so much. Correct. Let's blame it on the grass field. Yeah. <laughs> That's Allison Kiernan trying to get things going for the Dalers. <laughs> and that was Amanda Stahl. Balls coming at us and just out of harm's way. Us being harmed. <laughs> and Nico Lespatelier. Uh, uh, <laughs> come on. So close. So close. Practice Las, with Las me. Hospitalia. Hospitalia. Just call her Nico. <laughs> All right, Nico with the free throw. <laughs> Since I can't get her name right, I'm just going to speak in rhymes. We just will call her Nico also, so we're good. And that's a push on Farmingdale from behind. So you, we're starting to see a little frustration. Do you think that's because yes. they're unable to score offensively, or is that just because it's just getting chippy between two rivals? Yeah, I, I think it's fun. I mean, I think they're both getting into it, and I, I think that, you know, whatever it takes to get the ball, and, and you're going to do whatever you have to do until they call it. They happen to call that play, so no harm, no foul. Coach Dave Otto, sunglasses have come off, quietly assessing his team from the sideline. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting. Dave and I coach in the same manner. 
<laughs> not even close. I can't imagine that's true. I can't it imagine you so standing there true. quietly, idly by. Yes, never. <laughs> I'd be scared to have you as my coach. Thanks, appreciate that. <laughs> that's, see, that, that is a compliment to a coach. Now the Braves are threatening. And, of course, the scouting report by the Taylors, they recognize Nikki Finelli has the ball. You better double-team her. They you did do. just that. But I also think the interesting thing about soccer is that you could have the numbers. The defense could be slow in getting back, and all you have to do as a defender is kick it out of bounds, and your whole defense can then drop in. Yeah. You know, so I always find soccer so interesting in that regard. It's not where there's an advantage for you just kicking it 20 yards out of bounds. Well, that was thrown in by Sasha Cherinkin, one of the many seniors on this team. About a little over half of this Braves team are seniors. But as we've said time and time again, the, the future is bright for this team. they got a lot of freshman talent, the Romano Twins, as they're trying to generate some offense, trying to get that first goal of the game. And it's starting to get to that point where you feel like the next goal to be scored is going to be the game-winning goal. Yeah, the only goal. Yeah. You know, I mean... And neither one of these teams wants to break right now. I mean, they're okay with bending, but neither one... Oh. And another break. chippy play. A smile on the face of Emma Best. As she took down. Oh, there's the push off right there. Knocked her down. That was Caitlin Shin. There's going to be a yellow card on this one at this point if they're not careful. Please take a deep breath and relax. Yeah, the refs are they're getting a few, ready. Yeah, a few they're getting words. Ready. A few words out of the, the referee. The ref's going to talk to them right now and say, ladies, we, we need to just all relax. We need to do, we, we need to figure this out. Well, that was referee Jim Swanson. And uh, as we see this chippy play can, keeping, uh, keeping up there between Emma Best and Caitlin Shin. Well, and that's a smart play by the official. Look, you don't want to card anybody because both teams are getting. So what he does is, is, is he tries to get her to calm down by pacing off the yards and then gives her a little verbal warning while he's doing it. So that's an experienced official. That's the way to go about it. Now, next time, you'll see the card come out. Yeah, it's gotten to that point now. And now the Braves are knocking on the door, and it is gobbled up by Gianna Vitelli. An excellent save there by the senior goalkeeper. Take a look at it again. Uh, Vitelli, with, with Sayasa players hanging on her right there, you saw Ali Mellis just waiting. Nikki Finelli with a shot, and it is saved by Gianna Vitelli again. The ball stays in play. Here's another shot and another save by Gianna Vitelli. That one coming off the boot of Avani Brandt. So the Braves are suddenly knocking on the door. Gianna Vitelli says no one's allowed in. I'll tell you, the first save she made against Finelli was, I think, the best out of the three. This sequence right there where she makes three quick saves, but that initial shot from Finelli, I thought that was going in. I did too, and you, you had that feeling because Finelli's been chomping at the bit. She's been off sides a couple times, one, maybe errantly. Nonetheless, it was called, and uh, there's a that is a pass up the field. She's definitely the fastest kid on the field. You know, for me, though, she's giving them, them fits. And again, they are, are bending but not breaking. But it, it seems like it's only a matter of time because she is a difficult matchup for this defense. Well, that was Amanda Stoll just trying to get it down the field, hoping someone would be able to get a hold of it. But instead, it's Eve Waldhauser assessing the situation under 30 minutes to go. Look at Finelli right there. I thought that was going in because I didn't even think she was going to be able to get a shot off. She had a little bit too much speed and just enough defense out of Allison Kiernan. As we resume play live here, that is Sasha Cherinkin. Trying to find the open player. That open player she was hoping was going to be Nikki Finelli. But once again, the Dalers defense does their due diligence. I like that alliteration. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, you are worth every penny, Mr. Cosa. <laughs> Wait, we get paid for this? I'm here as a fan. This uh, is a great game, though. I mean, you can't ask for a better soccer game like this. And, and I mean, both teams are really evenly matched. Same type of intensity. They each have that one star player out there that's... Although I will say Sydney Moore's been a little quieter because I think she's had to play a little more defense and offense today. Yes, absolutely right. And, of course, that free kick from Allison Kiernan. Once again, the Dalers, D. Able to get a hold of it. That is Riley Miller. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll be the Dalers once again. 
Rebecca Joseph. Slowly walks up the line, assessing the situation. We've got Bella Romano right in front of her. She's able to advance the ball up to Jaden Keener, the sophomore. And again, the double team. As soon as Sydney Moore touches the ball, she gets converged on by two Syosset defenders. And that is a testament to her skill level. We actually saw a little more action out of Sydney Moore right there, but and the pass comes across. It actually Kareem's off of her own player. It's sophomore Graziella De Dio. And now the Braves trying to move the ball off the field. It's the Romano. It's one Bella. Gets stripped up a little bit by Allison Kiernan. Who wants to know what the call was there, and it went against her. She's pleading her case to the ref, and the ref says, I'm sorry, the call has been made, and now play on. it is Bella Romano with an opportunity here. As you see Ali Milas in the foreground, trying to get herself open. There's the free kick. It comes across, and Nikki unable to get a boot on the ball there. Now Sasha Shrinkin trying to get a hold of it. Wisely passes it back as she was being hounded by Graziella Dio. And now it is Cameron Miller who hunts it down. Intercepted by the Dalers. Jaden Keener trying to advance up the field. That is intercepted by Emma Romano. And it is back and forth. We're back to this ping pong match. I'm going to need a, a <laughs> chiropractor after this game. Head's going back and forth. Ah, uh, they're also used to it. They're also used to it. Jayden this is Keener. how soccer is played. Absolutely. Plain and simple. I miss playing it, I'll be honest with you. This, uh, <laughs> especially this kind of game where it's getting really chippy here as we've got 26 minutes remaining in the game. Still scoreless, Colin Cosell and Tracy Wiener here at Syosset. The Dallas have yet to get that one bounce, you know, that gives them that, maybe not a set play, uh, you know, I, I don't know if a set play is gonna work because the defense is so on it. It's gonna be one of those broken plays. I think where the ball just takes a strange bounce or a strange hop and ends up, for either team, I'm not gonna say just the Dallas, but for either team and, and ends up in the back of the net. Yeah, and you also see two teams that are sizing each other up, trying to make sure they don't make that first mistake and that lends itself to what you just said. You don't want that kind of, that random, rebound or right, carry him exactly. off of someone else. But all this does show you is, is that this conference is so balanced. And Sydney Moore with the corner for the Daler is unable to execute once again. Sydney comes back in, tries to get the shot, and it goes wide. I'd like to see Sydney remaining. get a little more height on her corners. She seems to have a little bit of trouble today, and, and I don't know if it's being on the grass surface or whatever the reason is of getting the height that she needs to get it across the, the face of the cage. Well, it seems like she's been alternating. It seems like there's been one errant kick and then one that gets air, one that's a little too low, and then one get, that gets air. And it seems that their, their philosophy here, they think the best way to beat Eve Waldhauser is going to be with a header. Uh, it just doesn't seem to be coming to fruition in uh, the nothing meantime. Else gets through honestly you know you can kick it as low as you want but it's not going to get through all the defenders that are in front of you well that was Caitlin Shin with the goal kick now it's Jaden Keener advancing it up and once again the defense of the Braves Cameron Miller stopping the advances of the Dalers and now Caitlin Shin once again balls Sending our way almost out of bounds where it was intercepted by, of course, the super speedy Nikki Finelli. So fast. Makes I, it look I, so easy. I didn't even see where she was. I had Makes no idea she so was nearby. easy. <laughs> and that was, once again, Bella Romano. So they've got the right side and the left side of the field covered pretty well with Nikki Finelli and Bella slash Emma Romano. But yes, when you keep preaching this, and once again, the, the, the Braves are unable to find that offensive power in the middle. And you'd think that would be at the hands of maybe like an Ali Milas or uh, even Carly Weisfellner. 
who's currently not on the field, but uh, I anticipate they're going to give her a rest and get her back out there. Bella Romano once again, scrappy play, goes back out of bounds. And well, it will be the Braves' ball once again. Like I said, it's uh, not too much subbing going on today, which I find very, very interesting. And there is Emma Romano. Nice throw, just a little too far. Ends up at the feet of Alison Kiernan, who lets it go out of bounds. And that will be a goal kick for the Dalers. As we see Alison Kiernan, a name we've said several times today. She does a nice job. She's a steady Eddie back there. She's a big, strong kid. You know, very difficult to get around her. Yeah. And very, very physical. Yeah, the, uh, the Braves will absolutely attest to that. As we keep seeing Avani Brandt, I feel like Avani Brandt should be the, the breakout player in the middle today. Ball trying to get the pass across, but instead Cameron Miller has different ideas. Stops the ball, tries to advance it. Now the ping pong match resumes. That was a nice clean play by Avani Brandt. The refs recognized it. And Sasha Cherinkin. Gets it back into the Daler zone. Now, once again, Allison Kiernan advances it up the field. And it appears that Cameron Miller is going to let it go out of bounds. It does, and it's going to be a Braves free throw. Sorry, throw in, free throw, basketball. What is that? <laughs> My, what, what just happened there? Free kick. Did you imagine? Throw in. Okay, nobody scores, so we're going to change the rules. I did. <laughs> I did play this game, by the way. I don't know what gotcha. happened there. Okay. The rules might have changed since you played. And is, that a, is that an age <laughs> reference? Is that Not coming from me, that's for sure. <laughs> Not coming from me. Uh, well, we thank you for joining us at <laughs> Fios 1 sports coverage of girls high school varsity soccer, football, if you're across the pond. Colin Cosell, Tracy Wiener here in Syosset High School. Still notched at nothing apiece. The Braves. Defense once again staying strong and now an opportunity at the hands of Sarah Kratz who is hounded a double teamed if you will And that was Allison Kiernan on defense and Gianna Vitelli is able to put the play to bed She had a little bit of a step there probably should have tried to take some shot to get it going But the defense collapsed on her so quickly Oh, That was Graciela DiDio was upset that there wasn't a play there. Now, she, look, look at that, at, just overtaking the last minute. Correct. And then, you know, warding off the player at, so that Vitelli can get her hands on the ball. Well, we've seen that several times today where Emily Diaz and Allison Kiernan, when they double team together, they, they come in there with such speed and such force and fury. I can't see anyone getting past that. But if you notice, they didn't touch the player at all. No, it they was a very clean her, play. Yep. And, and then what they do is they just get into the space that she wants to run into. So she doesn't have a clear lane any longer. Yeah, they seem to just cut her off at the pass Correct. and let the ball carry through. Here's an opportunity that sails just over just the net. Just over the top. There's Allison Kiernan there in the middle of your field. She's had a, uh, a lot of free kicks today, goal kicks and the like. And there was the opportunity off her boot, and it just... Sails over as you see the clock in the background. Just under 20 minutes remaining in this game. Notched at nil. Notched at nil. And, and again, you know, this is the second game I've done in, in the last few days. And the competition is so tight that the games are so much more competitive. And uh, it's, it's so fun to, to be a part of it and watching girls soccer really... Be, have a lot more parity than it used to. Yeah, and you see that in the shot statistics there in the lower third of your screen, notched at six apiece. Now we're talking about the parity in this league. And these two teams, perfect examples of that. Correct. This has been a, a real battle between the two teams. I mean, it, it's been almost identical. And we saw that in the, the stat line as well. But it's been, uh, with the exception of offsides, that's, that's really been the story here. It's been so evenly matched. And once again, the Braves defense doing what they do best. 
their positioning is is truly uncanny. They have they have really really good soccer IQ as a collective team, but especially the defense. They seem to be in the right place at the right time at all times. You know, they all scout each other. Everybody knows each other. These teams are so familiar. It's not like the conference has changed much over the years. Well, we talked about the parity, Tracy, and you see it there. Uh, we're still notched to one between the Dalers and the Braves, three and two. Uh, two and two, and of course, East Meadow and Massapequa, Baldwin right behind them, seem to be leading the way so far, but still, we're at the halfway mark of the season. This is that type of game that could get something going for either the Braves or the Dalers. You know, when you think about it, if any of, either one of these teams goes undefeated in the second half of the season, you know, two, four, you pick up six more wins, and you end up being, you know, in first place. Well, here's a corner kick opportunity for the Braves. And it looks like it's going to come at the foot of Isabella Romano, lovingly known as Bella. You know, you would not think she's a freshman. She looks so poised out there. Nice, nice little play there just to get it to Avani Brandt to try to generate some offense from the outside. Offsides? That was a deep offsides call, but an offsides nonetheless. And the funny thing about these standings is with the... Uh, with the Dalers, a win puts them just behind uh, with, uh, I'm sorry, no, that would actually tie them up with 12 points. And a, uh, a win for the Braves would put them in second with 10 points right behind our leader. So it, it keeps going back and Correct. forth. It, it, it's who's the hot team at the end of the second half of the season that really is going to be the one to watch for in the playoffs. So it could go to anyone, keeping in, keeping in mind that all the teams do get into Correct. the playoffs. The Dalers have had five conference championships. The Braves won their last one six years ago, 2012. But neither of them has won the elusive county title. Interesting call there. There's a... Uh, Give and take Sarah Cross wants it to know is. what happened and well, uh, Allison Kiernan as well. She has to look 40 yards down the field to, to get the answer. <laughs> uh, but I think that that's part of it. You know, they're, they're saying, how can you make that distinction? And there was contact on both parts. He happened to see the Farmingdale player. So just go with it. And I think that the more that the girls chip at the official, it's not to their advantage. It never is. And you're talking to a coach that chips at the official all the time. And it really isn't to, to their advantage. This game is, is so evenly played. You don't want to give it yourself any disadvantage the officials are doing a fine job it's zero zero they are letting the girls play and you know me as as a coach i respect that more than anything and again the way they handled the play before getting uh the young lady to calm down just walking up to her it's it's a veteran officiating staff so the girls just need to play and the play has calmed down since then it was yes. really really chippy in the beginning here uh, as we had uh, an offensive opportunity, by the way, for the Braves, the future of the Braves, Bella Romano. But once again, the Dalers are able to get re regain possession. Another uh, saved by Gianna Vitelli, and now they are knocking on the door. Let's take a look at Coach Joe Marchetta, who wants his team to finally finish up on their chances. They take a look at the fouls. It's kind of swung a different direction now. It's, it's Farmingdale that's been more chippy. 10 fouls to the Braves, nine. And now the Dalers are trying to open up the field a little bit, try to generate some offense. That has been eluding them. That was almost an own goal opportunity there. But it went safely wide. Everyone lost sight of the ball there for a moment. And here's an opportunity. Once again, it's Bella Romano. She's off to the races, and she's trying to find someone else to be open with her. That would be Avani Brandt, who goes down hard but gets right back up. And the twin, Emma Romano, hunts it down. Trying to find an open player, but that is Allison Kiernan, defensive specialist. And she is mad. She is furious because a corner kick was called. She was convinced that went off of a Braves player. Well, she's going to get herself a yellow card if she's not careful. Uh, now, with, with all your chipping at the refs, there it is. The yellow card has been pulled. That thing is burning a, a hole in his pocket this entire time. 
Well, they've half, taken at least. a lot. You know, they've That's taken a lot. Right. I will give the officials credit on that one. The, the girls have been, you know, questioning a lot of things. And again, it's, it's just one of those things where, you know, I understand what she's saying. She's trying to ride the ball out of bounds. She feels like, you know, the player is, is, is maybe pushing a little bit. But I didn't really see it as, as being that obvious. <laughs> I'm reading her lips and say, how? How? <laughs> Which, that, that earned her the yellow card. But it was, uh, you know, that was kind of it was the next next player to make a mistake or sure. chirp too much to the ref was going to get that yellow card. So that was kind of a foregone conclusion as we regain play here. Dailers. Look, I love everybody's enthusiasm, and you know that. Well, you said you it was, know, we wanted it to be like correct. a playoff environment. There it's is starting to feel like that. One speaking captain, and, and that's the only one that's allowed to address the official on the field. So, have you ever gotten a bench penalty for all your chirping at, at refs? Maybe a few. You, <laughs> Maybe a few. It's a good thing the camera was not on Tracy. Her face said it all. There's been at least more than she could count on both yes. hands. Another in the Hall of Fame for that. Hallmark wants it to uh, hire me. I get so many cards. But, oh, that's good. I like that. <laughs> Once again, Isabella Romano. Bella with the offensive opportunity there. The corner kick. We saw this play before, advancing it over to Ivani Brandt. And that was the Braves' sixth corner. They realized that the kicking it towards the center of the goal area was not working, so they've just been setting up a play from the outside. And that is Farmingdale can't let their emotions get the best of them right now because in that flurry of, of what was going on, they've really given Sayas a few good scoring opportunities. So in a 0-0 game, you really want to learn how to keep your head about you. Especially with time winding down. Absolutely. We are 20, almost 28 minutes into this second half, still notched at no goals apiece. And so we're seeing, again, that the tight defense has been there. The offensive opportunities are eluding both of these teams. Could very well end up nothing, nothing time. That remains to be seen. In the meantime, we've got a goal kick, and that is coming off of Caitlin Shin. And who else but Allison Kiernan was there to get the ball back into the Braves zone, but once again, the ping pong match continues. And a nice play by Bella Romano, finds the opening, and it hit the outside of the net. Just outside, Bella Romano looking a little disappointed, <laughs> and it was a little bit of a, an optical illusion there. The fans thought it went in, but as the replay will show you, as she broke free, tried to get that sharp angle shot, goes just well. And, and you have to give Vitelli credit on that because she really cut down the angle to nowhere to shoot, and that's hard to do on such a large shooting space. And it was a double-edged short because she also had Nikki uh, Finelli knocking on the door right behind her. Should the ball have gotten free? But now we've got Avani Brandt trying to hunt down the ball. She gets hold of it, dribbles up the sideline. We've seen some nifty footwork out of Avani Brandt all afternoon. She's not disappointed. And finally, the Dalers give up and say, you know what, just kick it out of bounds. Correct. We're tired of your trickery. <laughs> Let's just settle in. Yeah, it's time to reset. And reset they do. Izzy Lee, number 35, the sophomore, the throw in. Nice play by Avani Brandt to make sure that the ball was still in the Braves' possession, but. Unable to get it was Nikki Finelli. Now Belly, Bella Romano tried to get on top of it, unable to do so. So we've got the throw in coming at the hands of number eight, Rebecca Joseph, the senior. an opportunity for the Dalers. It's Graziella Dio. Gets it across. Guess who was ready for it? The freshman, Eve Waldhauser. One of the easier saves she's had to make today, but she's been there and ready every single opportunity today, and yeah. this was no different. And it's just been a while since there's been a shot on her, so I, you know, you don't blame Didio for taking the shot right here. Center cage, though, just a kick and catch. Trying to generate offense is Amanda Stoll, the junior for the Dalers. And now with an offensive opportunity, perhaps Nico 
Boss Battalier. I got it. You did get it. A for effort. I got it. I got it. A T for nice try. <laughs> she will be throwing it in. Seems to be her wheelhouse. And once again, the ball just can't seem to find a way its way in the middle. And there it finally does with an opportunity. It was Emma Best, the freshman, trying to track it down and get control, unable to do so. It is then picked up by her teammate, safely Julia McHugh. But it goes out of bounds. The Dalers are back on top of it again. But an errant pass. No one wants to make a mistake there. Everyone seemed to back off of the ball a bit. And that's Emily Diaz there along the sideline. Ball goes out of bounds. Wasting no time. Throws it in. Trying to head it along with Jaden Keener. But the... Braves defense, as it's been all day, too tough. 32 minutes in here, in the second half. If you're not a mathematician, that means eight minutes remaining here in the second <laughs> half. Still tied at nothing apiece. Tracy Wiener, Colin Cosell with you. And safely kicked out of bounds by Cameron Miller. It's so interesting to me now, so a 0-0 game, halfway through your season, everybody's going to the playoffs anyway, do you throw everything to try to win this game or do you want, not want to make a mistake like that? Those are the things that always go through my mind in, in, in a coaching moment is, you know, am I going to go all out effort now to get to the goal and perhaps make some sort of a mistake? Well, it seems to be a delicate balance. There's definitely opportunities and here comes another one, Bella Romano. No, this is not a broken record, I promise you. This is live. We've said her name a lot today, haven't we? And she kicks it, hoping maybe, maybe just maybe, Gianna Vitelli, the senior goalkeeper, would give up a rebound there, but nothing doing. You're not going to get a pass to a senior goalie like that. No. Still a smart play and still calculated, and there's that delicate balance I was just talking about. And, of course, the player I was just talking about, Bel Romano trying to find the speedy Nikki Finelli. But once again, Gianna Vitelli was there for it. So, yeah, it's going to be that delicate balance of playing that chess match, not making a mistake, but also trying to find that offensive opportunity without leaving their other players out to dry. Correct. And now the Braves have been generating some consistent offense here in the zone, but it goes off of the boot of Avani Brunt. Avani gets it out of bounds. It is going to be the Dalers throw in. Eventually, Nico Bospitalier. Knock it down and take a look at the Dalers for the past three years. They had 11 to 5 record just a couple uh, or a year ago. Went to the Nassau AA quarters. Lost in the first round in 2016 and did not make the playoffs in 2015. So Dave Otto has really turned this program around a bit, seeing more and more success in the years that have passed. Yeah, having a, a Sydney Moore on your team helps dramatically. Oh, sure. <laughs> Oh, She's just unbelievable. Does not hurt at all when you've got that kind of talent on your team. And of course, that kind of talent breeds other talent as well. You're going to have other players that will see her look up to her. Maybe there's a you know, middle schooler or someone, or maybe in a camp. It's like, I want to be the next more. So now let's take a look at Syosset, their last three years, 2015. They only made it to the AA first round, 2016, with a 3-6-4 and four record. Nassau AA semis, and of course, last year they lost in the Nassau AA quarters. And that was after a 2-9-1 and one record. So it just goes to show that it could go any way. Um, the best record had the least fruitful result there for the Braves. I do. I find that happens in soccer more than any other sport just because these teams are so evenly matched and because so many kids get injured early on in the season and and then, you know, it changes the dynamic whether you get a player back or you lose one of your dynamic players going into the playoffs. So it's about staying healthy. It's about getting that chemistry going and peaking at the right time. Correct. Having a hot goalie helps too. <laughs> Having someone with a, uh, a hot boot doesn't hurt, <laughs> especially when you're such a defensive-minded team as these two are. We were joking with Coach Otto of the Dalers. He said, uh, you know, I'd hate to be a part of the, the meeting 
or we try to figure out the seating if everyone's tied. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be crazy, Miss. Uh, I'm trying to, there's no openings. You see some set plays that just keep breaking down on both sides of the field as we go just under four minutes remaining, still notched at zero. So now we're going to see if what you said is true, if there's going to be some urgency out of these two teams here in the waning moments, or if they're going to be happy to just come away with a tie. We'll find out soon enough. Allison Kiernan is gearing up for the free kick. And interesting, you know, the time is still ticking off while this is going on. So this this is almost like a 45-second timeout, if you think about it. Everybody's on the field right now, catching their breath, doing what they need to do. It was just four minutes when the whistle was blown, and now we're down to about 3.15 left in the game. And you've got Sarah Krotz and Avani Brandt who are trying to block it up there a little bit. And, of course, as a result, Allison Kiernan just over, it over the, top. the net. Yep. Just over the top. That's the second time she's done that. What a strong foot she has, though. Think about it. I mean, she gets it over the entire offense and defense. <laughs> and then, you know, that could have been three points if we were playing real football. Or if this is a 100-yard field, that might have actually gone in. You never know. We are under three minutes remaining here in the half after we killed just about a minute there setting up the aforementioned Kiernan free kick. And the defense of Riley Miller on, Riley. trying to force the Dalers outside and it worked. Ball nearly went out of bounds and it is kicked aside by Cameron Miller but it is reacquired by the Dalers who seem to be opening things up a little bit. That is Sydney Moore, who you expected to step it up a little bit. And another opportunity there for the freshman Emma Best for the Dalers. What a nice setup, though, by Moore. She draws the entire team into her space and then passes it opposite side. You see everybody's leaning her way, and instead she, she just forces it out there to the only space where a Farmingdale kid can get a kick off, but over the top of the net. Well, dear scouting report, you did a good job. <laughs> She did. Well, that's that's her IQ, teaching everybody else where they're supposed to be and where the open space is. And, and think about it. If they can understand that concept in the beginning of October, where, where are they going to be come late October, early November? Well, those are the intangibles you'll find in this kind of game. Once again, the Braves trying to knock on the door, but it is because of the fine defense of Nico Lospitalier. Yeah, we've said Nico's name a lot today. She has just done, I think, a great job of being calm, being steady back there. Again, bending but not breaking. And that is Nico's style. She's had, she's been their throw-in specialist. She's yes. played tremendous defense. She's had speed. We there we saw on the offensive side of the field. She's been on varsity athletics, uh, I would think, her whole high school career, whether it's on soccer or lacrosse, whatever it is that she does. And, and so these games don't really phase her. It's, it's all she knows. Well, we're at less than a minute as the ball comes out of bounds. And off of my foot. <laughs> and now there's Nico once again. Hospitalier throws it down. And once again, it is the defense of the Braves. What you see right here is Sayasa just trying to kick it out of bounds because it is deep in their territory. They don't want to give Farmingdale 30 seconds to maybe score in, in the final end of this game. Well, if they're going to throw everything at them, including the kitchen sink, now is the time to do it. Correct. His time is winding down. The aggressive goaltending of Eve Waldhauser. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's right. She is a freshman, and she was fearless on that play, coming out to make sure that nothing was going to come of it. And in the waning moments, Tracy, it looks like we've got the nothing-nothing tie, the self-fulfilling prophecy of yes. David Otto. Correct. <laughs> well, this is exactly what you expected out of these two defensive powerhouses and we will give you the full wrap-up of everything that transpired in this game a battle of two d's battle of two solid goaltenders some offensive opportunities but none of them able to find the back of the net stay tuned we'll be back in just a moment we're gonna wrap this thing up from syosset it's verizon files one sports we develop quality citizens who keep our core. Horizon Files TV, the one place for everything on our island. Welcome back to Syosset, where, as expected, the Dalers and the Braves finish up at 0-0.
two really outstanding defensive displays today. Saw some offensive opportunities as well, but this is exactly what we expected out of this game, Tracy. When we talk about parity within the division, I, I think this game epitomizes it, that both teams tried to break a little, uh, bend a little, excuse me, nobody broke. Goalies played real steady. For me, what I found, believe it or not, most impressive, Syosset's freshman really came to play. Yeah. And, and, and they were the ones that we spoke of mostly. It shows for a bright future for them, but for me, it also shows that as the season gets deeper and they continue to grow in their confidence, I think Syosset is a team that everybody needs to look out for. I also think that that's going to be true a few years down the line when those aforementioned freshmen are seniors. They are the leaders, and they showed leadership qualities on the field today. The Romano twins, obviously, and uh, of course Nikki Finelli it's just a very talented team and of course their goaltender has been stellar as well so the future looking very bright for the Braves and for the Dalers as well now we'll take a look at the updated standings in the Nassau Conference AA1 and what uh, what, do you, what do you see here? What what could what could possibly come of this? Uh, again, this is what I say to you. Let's say, for instance, we'll, we'll just take Farmingdale because they're in fourth place right now. As the second half of the season goes on, they go into a two, four, six game winning streak. They're going to finish at nine, two, and one. Very, very, very impressive. That could be good enough for them to almost win this league. So you look at them now; they're in fourth place. But all it takes is a four or five game winning streak, and they will jump over three or four teams. And and that to me speaks volumes of the of the parity of this conference, the, the strength that they all bring. There's two points between the top-seeded team right now and the fourth-seeded team, and that makes for great soccer moving forward. I think that all these teams at the midway point feel that they have an opportunity to not only uh, play better, but to maybe move up in their conference and then to win this county title. Well, if we learned anything from today's game, it could be anybody's championship to win. Take a look at Farmingdale's upcoming schedule. Not an easy one this <laughs> Wednesday against Massapequa, and then not much easier against East Meadow. But then you take a look at those remaining games. The one that sticks out to me is Baldwin, but some real opportunities for the Dalers. Yeah, but you look at it, it's all in a two-week period. You have six games in basically a two, two-and-a-half-week period. That is, you know, that's quite the pace to keep up when you're playing physical, physical soccer. It's not like these teams are, are just, you know, hitting it back and forth. You saw today's game. Very, very physical for just a, a conference non-playoff game. And, and that's what these teams do to each other. They beat each other up going into the playoffs. And, of course, Syosset having to go up against this Daler squad to round out the season. But in the meantime, they get to take on a very tough East, East Meadow team. And, of course, Massapequa and Baldwin, all teams that are ahead of them right now. So they have an opportunity to make a run themselves. And I do think for Syosset, it's just a matter of them building their confidence at this point, integrating their younger players with their veteran players, and then putting it all together by the end of the season. That's the beautiful part about playing in the Power Conference, is that you go into it as a coach knowing that you do have eight weeks to coach your team and not have to worry about playoffs other than seeding. So that's going to do it from here in Syosset. This broadcast has been a presentation of Horizon Files 1 Sports. We give a special thanks to our producer, Frank Pasquadro, director Dan Lippenholtz, as well as the rest of our tremendous Files 1 broadcast crew. On behalf of my broadcast partner, Tracy Weiner, I'm Colin Cosell, saying so long from Syosset High School. This has been a special presentation of Horizon Files 1 Sports.